I am wearing my sunglasses because it's quite sunny, even though it's not real warm. It's in the 50s here. Uh, I am in Northern California. I am in Donner Pass. I am actually at the Donner Memorial State Park, which, uh, if you're looking at a map, is just to the northwest of Lake Tahoe, just off of Interstate 80. In fact, you can hear Interstate 80. It's right there. And... Uh, I'm uh, very near to the spot where the Donner Party was stranded here in the fall and into the winter of 1846-1847. Uh, many of you are familiar with the story. I won't recount all of it for you for now, but uh, long story short, like thousands of others, there was a party led by, among other people, uh, George Donner and members of his family that were making the trek from the east all the way to California. Uh, an arduous task in any circumstance and uh, they had heard about something called the Hastings Cutoff which was supposed to be a way of cutting 300 miles off of the journey which obviously would sound very tempting to anybody and meant going to the south of the Great Salt Lake instead of around the north and they took that but uh, through a series of mishaps a lot of problems ended up further behind than they would have been if they had just taken the original route and they ended up up here in uh, what is now known as Donner Pass about 7,000 feet up in the Sierra Nevada mountains and it was here that they got stranded in November of 1846 and uh, some places there were 10 to 15 feet of snow in the snow drifts and uh, about half of that party ended up uh, dying obviously there was cannibalism involved and uh, I won't recount all of that, but I, I, there's a museum here. It's, it's really cool. There's not a lot here, but the scenery is absolutely gorgeous. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place to be. And uh, you can come here and check it out for yourself if you ever happen to be in this part of California. But uh, I'll put some of the information down below in the description. You can read more about what happened with the Donner Party. But uh, there were murders that took place as part of all of this. Um, people broke off into separate groups. There were rescue attempts that were made. Um, a lot of the people who survived were actually the uh, people one might not expect to have survived. It wasn't the, the fittest men. A lot of times it was the women. Uh, and I, I don't mean this in any disrespectful way, but the women, especially at that time, uh, who had had children, had a little more meat on their bones, and that actually worked to their advantage uh, because it meant they had more that they could survive on when starving. Uh, obviously, some of them resorted to cannibalism. Some of them actually ended up killing people in order to eat them. Uh, not necessarily right here as part of the Donner Party, but in other locations. But um, I'll put some links to some documentaries so you can read up and, uh, and kind of learn more about that. But I'll give you some, some scenes, uh, let you look around a little bit and see what it's like. This behind me is a statue that's uh, uh, it's actually part of a, a memorial that's to all of the pioneers, not just the ones who came in the Donner Party, but those came, who came before and after them who made the trek over the Sierra Nevadas uh, and into California. Uh, absolutely gorgeous, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. Definitely worth checking out if you're ever in this area.
So I'm standing now near the back of the Pioneer Monument, and there's a plaque there, and I'll get a closer look here in a minute for you, but I didn't want to get too close because there were some other folks there, didn't want to disturb them, but that plaque actually is dedicated to the Donner Party, and it talks a little bit about their arrival here, which was on uh, about October 29th when they arrived in this area, and the snow was already so deep by this point uh, that they couldn't find the trail. So that was why they kind of got lost and got stuck here, because they didn't know which way to go, because they couldn't see anything. Uh, and according to the plaque there, uh, the top of this monument, which you'll see right there, is 22 feet. And it says that's how deep the snow was. And you can see the people standing there to kind of get a comparison. And about 200 yards from here is actually where several of the cabins stood that belonged to the Donner Party. And I'll go down uh, a little ways and, and take a look at that here in just a minute after I give you a closer look at the plaque. Near this spot stood the Breen Cabin of the party of emigrants who started for California from Springfield, Illinois in April 1846. Under the leadership of Captain George Donner, delays occurred, and when the party reached this locality on October 29th, the Truckee Pass emigrant road was concealed by snow. The height of the shaft of the monument indicates the depth of the snow, which was 22 feet. After futile efforts to cross the summit, the party was compelled to encamp for the winter. The Graves Cabin was situated about three quarters of a mile to the eastward, the Murphy Cabin about 200 yards southwest of this monument, and the Donner Tents were at the head of Alder Creek. Ninety people were in the party and 42 perished, most of them from starvation and exposure. I'm now standing uh, about 200 yards southwest of the memorial uh, where I was at earlier and this is the burial spot of the bodies that were found um, from the winter of 1846-1847. This uh, stone here as it reads it says uh, the face of this rock formed the north end and the fireplace of the Murphy cabin. General Stephen Kearney on June 22, 1847 buried under the middle of this cabin, the bodies of those found in the vicinity. The following is a complete list of the members of the Donner Party who occupied the various cabins and tents. And then they're divided into those who survived and those who did not. And uh, so I'll, I'll look around here a little bit, but uh, I'm basically standing on the graves uh, of these folks who, who died pursuing uh, a better life for themselves in, in the West. And uh, something that really encapsulates the American spirit. Uh, and though they made some fatal mistakes, uh, they were mistakes that any one of us could have made ourselves and uh, to be admired for what they went through here. One last observation I'll make as I'm returning to my car now. Uh, it's not easy to find this particular part of the, uh, the memorial. There's no signs that indicate if you come this direction, this is where you'll find it. Um, my best suggestion would be to stop in where the museum is. There's a little uh, desk there with uh, some folks working and you can ask them. Uh, I just pulled it up on my uh, GPS on my phone and uh, looked for it that way and kind of followed the trail down. But there's nothing that indicates on any of the trails that this is where you need to go to find it. So um, don't just show up thinking you'll be able to find it very easily. Uh, but it's well worth your time. Uh, it's a beautiful and a very solemn place. So I definitely highly recommend it if you ever find yourself on Interstate 80 traveling west uh, through Nevada and into California.
Christ that came and filled the chairs with his canes and sat by the fire. He gave us their ideas and their elders to help us about what this crime may be used for. We got a number of items to indicate this is a really long time. What we may be looking at here is basically the base of the fire. At one time, it may have had a lid to it, but the stone lid where it actually would serve as a baking oven and a roast pan. 